Hello, everyone. My name is Steve Stodolsky. I'm the Platform Manager for the Liquid Products at Galvanic Applied Sciences. Today, we have an applications training on the Sour Water Stripper Unit. We will discuss the operational challenges and recommended instrumentation solutions. Sour water is wastewater generated from the refining processes that uses steam or water. This includes distillation, cracking, and amine units. Sour water is characterized by high ammonia and hydrogen sulfide content. Before sour water can be disposed of or reused, such as for crude desalter water, it must be treated in the sour water stripping unit. Here is a process flow diagram of a sour water stripper unit. First, there is a collection vessel where sour water streams from all sources gathers. A surge drum separates oil and hydrocarbons. Then the sour water is stripped in the column. Sour off-gas is routed to the sulfur recovery unit. The water is then pH adjusted and sent to wastewater treatment or recycled. Most plants use a single stage operating process at a pH of about eight. Dual stage processes are more efficient because they optimize the pH for both H2S and ammonia. pH is a very important parameter to control for the sour water stripping process. In single stage systems, some fraction of H2S is bisulfide and some fraction of ammonia will be ammonium. To maximize process efficiency, caustic dosing accuracy is critical. Since pH is extremely responsive to caustic injection, measurement should be made as close as possible to the control elements to avoid large pH fluctuations. This helps ensure that no more caustic is dosed than is necessary. The best way to measure caustic is using potentiometric acid-based titration. This allows you to truly determine the buffer capacity and correctly adjust dosing. Inline pH sensors are often used as a proxy for monitoring caustic strength. However, pH is a poor dosing control strategy since it only determines acid or base. A pH probe can read 13, but if the caustic strength is too low, a small amount of acid can cause large fluctuations. The probe can also easily foul in the harsh sample conditions. There are other chemistry challenges faced by sour water stripper operators. Phenol remains in solution and reduces the efficiency of ammonia stripping. Hydrogen cyanide is a volatile acid that can form thiocyanates. It's also a stronger acid than H2S, causing the formation of ammonium salts. This requires increased reboiler duty in order to achieve desired ammonia concentrations in the treated water. Heat-stable salts cause residual ammonia to remain, no matter how much stream is injected into the sour water stripper. Calcium and magnesium hardness present in the makeup water cause scaling. Excess caustic permanently binds H2S into solution. Solids and hydrocarbons cause fouling in the stripper column, reboiler, and heat exchangers. Excess oil in the strip sour water also creates an increased load for the wastewater treatment plant. Ammonia-rich acid gas routed to the SRU causes ammonium salt to build up which leads to blockages of the catalyst beds. Carbon dioxide reduces ammonia removal by converting it to ammonium. The best way to avoid these issues is to simply employ online measurement. Continuously monitoring wastewater chemistry improves the stripper efficiency. This increases energy savings and ensures environmental compliance is, is maintained. Process analyzers provide the required feedback to optimize steam injection and pH adjustment to avoid overstripping. Sample conditioning is available to regulate the sample and minimize maintenance. Multi-parameter configurations are available to measure multiple compounds using one analyzer, such as H2S and ammonia. Caustic can be measured using potentiometric titration. This follows an approved ASTM method and has an RTD for temperature compensation. The performance is plus or minus 2% of full scale. This measurement can include a second endpoint to measure carbonate. In some cases, we can add a third point to measure bicarbonate. H2S can be measured using an ion selective electrode measurement. For low ranges, we employ a standard known addition step for greater accuracy. This follows an approved ASTM method 
with plus or minus 5% full-scale accuracy. Ammonia can be measured using an ion selective electrode measurement. For low ranges, we also employ a standard known addition step for greater accuracy. This again follows an approved ASTM method with plus or minus 5% full-scale accuracy. Cyanide can be measured using a colorimetric method. This follows an improved EPA method with plus or minus 2% full-scale accuracy. Phenol can be measured using a colorimetric me method also. This follows an improved EPA method, again, with plus or minus 2% full-scale accuracy. Physical properties such as suspended solids, oil and water, or hydrocarbon can also be measured in sour water stripper water. These compounds can be easily measured using an acoustic pack scatter method. This follows an approach outlined in the U.S. Geological Survey from 2014. Using this method is extremely low maintenance and offers plus or minus 4% of full-scale accuracy. The sour water stripper unit plays a key role in the reduction of plants pollution. Operators should be mindful of their sour water stripper ability to handle unexpected high quantities of sour water from upset conditions. If their unit is undersized, there could be a backlog of sour water waiting to be processed. The last thing a plant wants is unscheduled shutdowns of the sour water stripper unit to perform cleanouts. This would cause increased maintenance costs and put technicians in danger of exposure to high levels of H2S. Therefore, it's critical to optimize process control using online analyzers. These provide the measurement certainty you need for smooth operations. Thank you for our training today on the Sour Water Stripper. Hopefully you've learned at least one way how to improve your process control. If you have any questions, please reach out to Galvanic Sales Team, myself or your local representative. Thank you and have a nice day.